A lot of sports players are fans of it, and that's wild because I met Pau Gasol and he was a fan of the movie. Kobe used to talk about Sandlot on TV. NBA players, uh, MLB players, like all those guys, they're just young sports players growing up, so that's a sports movie and they all watched it. Well, I wanted to have you on Courtside Club. Oh, thank you. For one specific reason. My crossover? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. So maybe you could show us later. I can't. You play basketball. I did, yeah. Did. Okay. Yeah. I like to consider myself retired now. Okay. okay. But um, I heard you're an only child. I am. So we can relate to something. You're an only child? Only children. <laughs> oh, my God. This is huge. It's huge. Um, yeah. I, I'm an only child. It's, uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I could, I really never want, I, it, you cannot marry an only child. You know that. So your kids will not have uncles and aunts. Isn't that so sad though, to think two only children, their kids won't have cousins. They won't have aunts and uncles, nothing. Yeah. I guess I've never thought about it. I thought a lot about like it. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Because there's two sides of the only child like life, right? There's people like myself who loved it. Like, I didn't want any siblings. Wow. I actually really loved it. And then there's the other side where they've always wanted a sibling and they resent their parents forever. You seem I, to have a great childhood from yeah. what I've heard in your interviews. And obviously, we've we've all yeah. seen you since you were a kid. Yeah, you, you had a little <laughs> glimpse into my childhood. I, uh, I'm definitely not um, bitter at my parents. I, I don't think I... I think I longed for siblings a little bit, but it also, you become, it makes you, uh, uh, it, it helps you make friends easier. You learn how to, you know, kind of formulate relationships and, and you know, be on your own. And uh, I, I think I probably, because of that, had more friends in life than, than I would have if I had siblings. So, huh, interesting. Yeah. And I'm I feel really, like I have yeah, no you? friends because I'm so content with being by myself <laughs> wow yeah i mean i i guess i'm you loved being an only child i mm -hmm. don't i think i'm somewhere i don't resent it but i definitely didn't love it i didn't uh i i didn't like you know uh i i didn't resent but it, it wasn't something i was excited about for sure well you gained some non-blood brothers through a movie that yes. is so iconic 30 years later the Sandlot, we have Crazy. to talk about it. Let's do it. it and I did gain some non-blood brothers, yeah. Thank how you. how was that? I started in this industry at maybe 21, and it's hard to navigate in general. I couldn't imagine being 13 on a hit movie. Yeah. Um, Although it seemed like, and, and pardon my interruption, no. it seemed like you guys were just kids having fun on set. Yeah, we totally were. Um, I think because we were teenagers, it was a little easier to navigate than it would have been if we were eight or nine. It's funny because originally they the movie was written for eight and nine-year-olds, and they actually cast a whole group of eight and nine-year-olds. And then I'm sure through rehearsals or things like that, they realized that these kids were too young to be saying some of the things we were saying, to be doing some of the, <laughs> yeah. it just was like sacrilegious, it, you know. Um, so they recast it and put us in there. And I and because we were 13, it, it was the perfect age, you know. Uh, we, you know, 13 is a big age for guys. It's, you know, you go through puberty, you're, you know, just learning about life. You can, you know, have crushes on girls. Eight and nine, I think, is a little early for that sort of thing. So, um but yeah, to answer your question, I, I guess it was interesting. My high school, my college was on movie sets. That that was my life growing up. Um, and, you know, it, it was interesting. So I've heard you talk about it before. You were actually the last one who was cast in that yeah. film. Yeah. And I've also heard you say that that's one of the first things that you ever booked which is also wild in Hollywood because normally it's like years and years, hundreds and hundreds of auditions before you land anything. Yeah. And even with that, the thing that you land is normally, you know, a whatever commercial that 
runs at two o'clock in the morning. Totally. You know. <laughs> yeah, I it I guess it um it was sort of meant to be, I guess. Uh just sort of all the things that had to go right for me to land that role. Um it was like I said, they recast, so then they had their whole new cast, and there was someone in the role uh that they, they switched some of the roles a lot, like yeah, yeah, became squints, squints became yeah, yeah. Uh, and and they were just sort of figuring it all out. There was someone hired for one of the roles, but he fell off. I don't remember why. So then the role of Ham was available again right at the last minute. I got called in. I had one audition for it too. And this is a big... Uh, There's so only one? I had one audition. Um, and, and you have to think, this wow. is back in the day before COVID and you, know, ever, you did everything in person. You had... Auditions, callbacks, screen tests, you know. Right. And it was so last minute that I had one audition for the director and the casting director. And uh, I they they called me that night and said, okay, the director likes you. We're going to bring you out to the baseball field where all the – everyone's, you know, um, we had a little baseball camp. And you're going to meet the other guys. So you don't have the job, but if you get along and every, it makes sense, then you'll get the job. So – I went out and met the other guys and uh, like we got along and the rest is history. So it was 48 hours. It was crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. And you could have never imagined that that it would become as iconic as it is. No. And it, it's also been there's been a progression for that as well. Uh, I think when the 20th anniversary hit and then the 25th and then the 30th, like those milestones, uh, and the the generation passing it on to the next generation, I think, made it even more uh, of a sort of um, classic and you know crazy, crazy move like that for people. I realize as I get older, I hold on to nostalgia more, and I don't sure. know if it's my age. I don't know if it's just because in the world right now everything is so stressful. Yeah. So we hold on to the times that feel like that, or maybe like my grandparents do that, and it's the same thing. It's just about aging, but yeah. There is something that just feels so pure and just gives you a warm feeling about like going back. And to be fair, I went back and watched the film again before I sat down with you because I haven't seen it in years. But it just gives you that, I don't know, sense of yeah of the time that the 90s were. Yeah. And the 90s were, uh, they were great. I mean, and obviously that takes place in the 60s. But I think with this, with... uh technology and things that are happening and you know ai and all these right. terrifying subjects yeah I, I understand why it's <laughs> the same for me when i see the goonies it's amazing you know uh it's just people got out more they didn't have ipads they didn't have phones you know i don't know how we did it but it, it, it's funny we weren't reachable we were on our bikes no we just came home when the street lights came right. on <laughs> Yeah. Okay, street lights, come on, you're home. Right. And then we still were late and we got yelled at and it yeah. didn't matter. Like, and <laughs> I, I don't know. It's there's something about this current world that is terrifying. Let's talk about uh, baseball a little bit. Did you play before? Yeah, I, I I grew up playing all sports. My funny enough, my favorite sport to play is basketball. That's the one that I um I I just was the best at it. I was great until I stopped growing at 15 and then that became a problem. But, uh, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm five, eight on a really good day. Like, well, really I saw good. your TikTok recently, oh, so you, you know? Yeah. yeah. So with my shoes, with your shoes and your hair. Yeah. yeah. But the problem is the hair doesn't tran translate into <laughs> basketball at all. That doesn't matter. True. Um, yeah, I have a nice shot, you know, and that, that was the sport I liked. I definitely played baseball in little league and stuff. Uh, I never played catcher. I played second base and outfield, um, depending on the league I was in. Uh, but I, you know, I I loved I loved all sports and just um, was just kind of that you know a sporty guy. Kind of. Did thing. it ever get competitive on set? Were there times that you guys? I mean, competitive for different reasons. There, there was definitely a few of us that played baseball, and there were some that did not. So yeah. there was no competition between. You know, Mike Vitar played Benny. Myself, really, were the only. Uh, I guess Brandon Adams, who pitched, he he was pretty. He was halfway decent. Then there was a big drop off after us three, <laughs> so there wasn't a lot of competition there. Um, but 
I would say there's plenty of competition on on other things that 13 year old boys compete on, you know. Like, well, I could only imagine because I feel like even being a director of that film, it has to be part of it is obviously trying to make movie magic. And then the other half is like babysitting. Yes. It, and, and they were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were absolutely needing to be babysat. We got in so much trouble. I, I can't even tell you. We snuck into Basic Instinct. That's a rumor. That's absolutely true. We all snuck into the back of the movie on our <laughs> off time. And, you know, um, we would like just go on the weekends just raise hell everywhere and i'm sure they heard about it but they they loved it too like we were all we all were good at heart there was no yeah. bad apples and the parents were great um they were parents and we definitely i mean i got into it with parents and like kids and ta um Shane Obazinski who played the little brother sock socked me in the face right on the first baseline and he was so much smaller than me, I kind of laughed. But then I went and told his mom, I, I said, Shane just hit me in the face. And she looked at me and went, good. You probably deserved it. And oh, she was right, though. Okay. I fully did deserve it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you know, I mean, that that was that they were all our like moms. Like dance moms, but yeah. Sandlot moms. <laughs> yeah, but it was like we were all brothers and they all took care of us. So right. it wasn't. It was like the big brother getting punched by his little brother and her going, yeah, you deserved it. Knock it off. Get out there. You know, so it was, it was, fun. It was fun. Yeah. We had a good time. How many times a day or a week on average do people come up to you and say, you're killing me, Smalls? I mean, you know, it happens a time <laughs> or two. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's it definitely happens. I guess it depends where I am. Um, you know, when I'm in big crowds and things like that, it happens a lot. I just went to uh, the Players' Championship. I was just there um, doing a, a little something with Travelers Insurance, but I got to walk the course and it happened a lot there you know because the, there were a bunch of i guess baseball and golf fans are kind of the same you know family i could see it's that very similar very yeah. similar football fans are definitely their own deal but um but it's cool most people are nice you know i i 99 of people are nice and they come up and go oh my god you have been in my living room for 30 years you are part of our family like you said you yeah. know so I, I i don't see how that could really bother anyone 1% can be rough, but you know, <laughs> most of the time they're drinking and it's not a big deal. Yeah. And half the time of that, I'm having a drink too. So I don't <laughs> care, you know, like more times than not, it, it's been cool experiences. What about the, uh, truffle shuffle? Yeah. Not mine. Can you, yeah. But is that not something that also happens that people ask me? To yeah. Do? I, Funny enough, I or actually, wait, or is this just a TikTok that, skit that I'm getting okay, into? That was just uh, you're you're calling me out, but you're finding the truth. I really have not been asked to do the trouble. You have before. okay, okay, okay. No, but I but you would think that I have, so I used it to make it. I mean, it's okay? smart. Yeah, you do great on TikTok. I mean, don't get me wrong, I haven't not been asked, but it's not. People mostly know the difference between those two movies. I think they were a good enough uh, time split because uh, when was the Goonies? 88, 89, something like that. So, and Sandlot was 92. Can I like say something insane? I'm not sure if I've ever seen The Goonies. Oh, you have to watch The Goonies. What is it about? Um, it is about the Walsh family. And I don't want to give any spoilers. And um, <laughs> they uh, are about to lose their house. Okay. And there's a group of young kids. And then they find a map to One-Eyed Willie's treasure. Oh, fun. It's, it's a treasure a, it's hunt. It's a treasure hunt movie. Josh Brolin's in it. Um, okay. Bunch of great actors. Are in it. I mean, Sean Astin is the lead. Um, You're also talking to like a, a very sporty girl who. Yeah, it's not sporty. No, no, that's and that's fine. I don't yeah. need to watch all whatever, but I'm not great with like actors names. I'd be like, oh, I know, I know this person from this movie, but I, I, I Sean Astin was in Rudy. Remember Rudy? Come on. Oh, my God. you got to see Rudy. We've had a whole segment on the okay, show where they were, like, listing off big movies that I haven't seen. And it's, it is embarrassing. It's okay. It's, I have the same thing. I saw Dune 2 last night. So did I. So great. Right? Great. Okay. Yeah. So give me a check None of those guys are in there. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, yes. Josh Brolin is the older brother in The Goonies. Josh Brolin is... Uh, don't know his name. Is in the, Dune 2? He's in Dune 1 and 2. He's, the, like, the high commander of the his family. He's like the captain who. Oh, the 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 bald people, what? the 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 like bald headed people. No, no, not the Harkonnens or whatever. The good ones. The good ones, the Atreides, okay. right? Yeah. So he yes, is who Timothy the head, Sha yeah, what Chalamet. Yeah, this one. Love yes. him. Uh huh. Super crush on that guy. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, he is the captain of it. Um, but not the one who dies. The, the No, he lives. And then in Dune 2, he okay. finds him halfway through. You remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's Josh Brolin. He's the older brother in Goonies. Amazing. Yeah. I do know that guy. Yeah. And Sean Astin, did you see Lord of the Rings? Any of those? Ages ago, yes. Okay, he played Samwise Gamgee. The okay, cool. second guy to Elijah Wood. Okay. He so getting all, He was also in Stranger Things. Yes, scenes. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. okay. Go watch. All right. The Goonies. So, yeah, so I would Goonies know these. Goonies is my pe- Sam. Lot. That's why I'm very passionate about. Okay, it. love that. This is literally the movie that if I saw any of those guys, I would fanboy out and like say, "You changed my life. You were in my living room for 30 years." I would have that <laughs> moment if I met Sean Astin. Has there like who has been the biggest celebrity or actor, whoever who has come up to you and fangirl boy Boyd, over fangirl you boy yeah <laughs> i mean it, it's happened and it's really cool like you know um it, a lot of sports players are fans of it and that's wild because as a sports fan watching these guys they're larger than life to some degree but they're all younger than me most of them which is crazy uh but you know when i meet like i saw i met pal gasol and he was a fan of the movie oh, and cool. the guy's seven two and you're just like oh my god pal I mean, you know, Kobe used to talk about Sandlot on TV and never got to meet him, but that would have been oh, like, I love that. forget about it. So, you know, NBA players, uh, MLB players, like all those guys, they're just young sports players growing up. So that's a sports movie and they all watched it. Um, so that's cool. But uh, I don't know who the most famous person is that it, it's it's awkward to be honest when they come up to me because I'm like, ha, you're you know, bye, you're Brad Pitt. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, but uh, it's it's a little weird because I'm having a hard time keeping it together. You know, I, I would you want to be like, no, but you too. <laughs> yeah, I, well, and I do. I mean, yeah, uh, but you know, even at when I went to the Players Championship and met met Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler and these guys are fans of the movie, but I'm like, I've been watching you guys, you know play and win tournaments for de- well ricky for a decade i don't know about how long jt's been doing it but a couple yeah. of years you know i feel it's it's obviously a much smaller scale than the impact that you've had but when i was the host of nba 2k tv um i even just ran into a fan recently and i, and I haven't hosted there in almost six years now i've been off of the game and people come up to me and say you were my childhood because they played the game oh, when they awesome. were younger yeah and i get it so often and it's just like it's cool, but you don't – I didn't realize that I was impacting people's lives by sure. hosting a video game show and talking about basketball. Um, and yours as – the film obviously is, is much bigger than what I did. But it is a nice feeling to know that, you know, even if I'm not a part of their lives now or they're watching my things now, but like I had yeah. that moment too. It is cool, right? I mean that's that's why we do it, to entertain and to yeah give joy and then to hear that you did that that's that's a cool thing and you you definitely did through through that and smaller scale but i, I, I related I, mean, hey, I relate to uh, it a bit me, video games are <laughs> massive now they are yeah um yeah it's it's true i think the coolest one was shack there we go that's the answer we love shack i on did shacktacular when i was younger and um i all of a sudden i was like playing basketball and then all of a sudden i heard this deep voice behind me and said what up little man <laughs> and then this hand palmed my head and the fingers came down to here on me and then i turned around and it was shack and i looked up and then i shook his hand and my hand was so small in his yeah. hand that like i couldn't even get around like the sides <laughs> of his hand yeah. and he just i mean you always hear the shack stories like he's the best the best and that i think that was the coolest moment that i had that's cool yeah. i i have to say shack has never once in the many of times that we've worked together palmed my head yeah maybe it's a good thing yeah i don't think <laughs> i think it's good yeah he can palm my head yeah not yours you, yeah. you can hold on to yeah, that yeah, one yeah, yeah so after sandlot um you've obviously been in the entertainment industry now for 30 plus years mm-hmm. um i did hear you say though in one of your interviews when you started getting a bit older, like your later teenage years, it was kind of hard to stay out of the Trouble. Hollywood scene. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you kind of touched on it earlier. Like I, I had this, I, my first agent was Judy Savage and she's, uh, she's past, since passed now, but she's a legend. Uh, any young actor was with Judy Savage and, 
I I remember meeting with her when I came to town and she signed me and she said, you know, don't be surprised if you don't work for a few years or or this or that. And, uh, you know, Sandlot was pretty much my first job. And then I came back and auditioned for Son-in-Law and got it. And so I was on back to back right. big movies. I didn't have that sort of struggle experience until my late teens, early 20s, where yeah, then you start auditioning, then you go to network on shows and then you don't get cast and that's a bummer. And, you know, your um, that sort of rejection kind of occurred then. And I'm now in the Hollywood scene surrounded by Hollywood mm-hmm. and all the negatives that come with that. Uh, luckily, I had two very close friends that I'm still friends with to this day. Uh, we were the three-headed monster and we all had very similar... We luckily didn't struggle with alcohol. Believe me, we drank some, but we didn't. Uh, <laughs> we it didn't affect us, you know, how it does some people. Um, and this is like high school age, yeah, college? yeah, like nine, uh, late nineties, early two thousands, and and then I got married young. So and I've been with my wife since almost seventeen years now. Or six. Better get this right. Yeah, seventeen <laughs> years. Um, so I sort of. I had about a decade there, but, I, you know, had those two buddies and I think we kept each other in line. Plus it was before social media. So like, yeah, I'm sure, you know, there'd be some embarrassing videos of me somewhere on sunset, you know, a few too many. Well, and, I, yeah, em- embarrassing me, but there are some of these kids who get so caught up um, and yeah, I don't they say the wrong thing and they yeah. say the say the wrong thing or fall into the crowd with the wrong people totally. and, you know, fall into drugs or, you know, or some that we're finding out now are actually getting abused. So maybe they yeah. were getting abused on set. They turned to something and they didn't have the help that that's how they were coping yeah. with it. And it's really sad to it see because it happens. Um, it's out there. And, and it happens a lot. And people laugh about it. They're like, oh, that, you know, it's always the child stars who go right. crazy. But it's like, well, maybe they didn't have the support around them yeah, and to that's guide what I mean. them. That's true. That's what I mean about my buds. Like we really we really supported each other enough that that wouldn't have happened to us because we wouldn't have let that happen to each other. I also, again, was 13. That's a different age. You, there's not you can't do much with a 13 year old. That, you know, you could, you know, you could take advantage of younger. And I understand that even at any age that can happen. But yeah, uh, an eight or nine year old physically can't defend themselves. Mm-hmm. The Sandlot boys <laughs> can defend ourselves, you know. And Listen, no matter what age, yeah, the Sandlot boys. The sand, no matter what <laughs> yeah. age. We're and I had, a, I have, you know, a really good family. My mom, my dad, um, my step parents. So all all that support, I I didn't, you know, I did it on my own determinism. I I I never did anything I didn't want to. So I'm I'm one of the lucky ones f- from that perspective. I would say, you know, I've had my own struggles and things that are that are challenges, but um, it hasn't been a charmed life. But I definitely, uh, you know, have not fallen into some of those things. You seem pretty down to earth from the somewhat. 30 minutes we spent together (laughs) to cap off our discussion on sandlot here on courtside club we do like to take a halftime break oh great so for halftime okay i would love if you could recast the main boys of sandlot all nine let's let's pick let's pick five okay with using only professional athletes wow do you want me to pull up a uh I mean, you probably Does it have to be would... baseball players or no, okay. any professional athlete. And and this is also this is your casting. So I'm you just can... trying to think, like, who is the most Benny like? Do you want to do you, do you want to start with yourself? Maybe that would be no, easiest. OK, I don't. okay. That's, that's that's not starting with you. That's right. very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> OK, I kind of feel like is Aaron Judge as Benny crazy? Like this is your feel, cast. That feels right, I mean, doesn't it? Uh, OK, biggest, let's go. One Aaron... of the biggest superstars so in the sport. I, right. I'm going to go. Yeah. Aaron Judge as Benny. All right, starting um, off strong. I'm gonna go. So I'm just gonna do me small. I'm gonna do four. That works. Me, Benny, small squints. How about that? Perfect. Um, I'm gonna say. Oh, I mean, God, who's squints? Um, Dustin Pedroia. Let's go, Dustin Pedroia. Okay. Remember from the Red Sox. No. Okay. But we'll, we'll take him. 
Uh, I like that. <laughs> Wait, I is like, he current player? No, he's old. But okay. he played second base, and he was a little on the shorter side. Okay. Um, so I mean, I could go uh, Jose Altuve, but like that sort of could. felt right for Squints too. I was thinking like one of the shorter guys, because Squints a fair, little guy, fair, right? yeah, fair. Uh, but he still hit dingers. So <laughs> yeah, I and mean, you know, we're going a very like I like that your baseball. mind goes like completely logical on this. Yeah, like well, we have to I get know, the body. I'm <laughs> trying to think. Height. I think uh, Big Poppy feels like ham, you know, like we'll go okay. with best uh, fun, best uh, really or uh, DH in the game. You know, we'll we'll take him. And then who else did I say? I said, uh, oh, Smalls. Let's go Freddie Friedman. I feel like he's, okay. you know, Dodger. I like that. Just, you know, just that you're it feels right. Something about that feels right. So let's let's name them off one more time. So we have Big it. Poppy for ham. Freddie Friedman. For Dodgers. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Big Poppy. The greatest of all time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we went Dustin Pedroia for Squints or Jose Altuve. Yeah. We went uh, uh, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge for Benny. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. And then who did we, well, who else did I say? This is the one I that you forget. That you, oh, yeah. Freddie Friedman. Yeah. For Smalls. Yeah. That Perfect. feel right? I like it. Yeah. Like, this is your cast, so I mean, listen, there is really no I wrong answer. I this all day. We could go NBA now. We could do anything, you know? <laughs> if you, I mean. NBA. How do we do this on NBA? I feel like that. Benny has to be like a goat. So like so you, we could go gonna Kobe. Put, we'll go Kobe. Okay, yeah. I mean, MJ, you know. A little too goat. Yeah, a little too goat. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go so, Kobe. So Kobe's Kobe Benny. Kobe for Benny. We'll go who for squints? Muggsy Bugs? Spud Webb. He okay. Was Web. Wasn't he like 5'3? Muggsy was 5'3. I met Muggsy Bugs and he was the only NBA player shorter than me. Bud <laughs> Webb was, was like my height. Was he a true 5'3 or was he really like 5'1? Oh, no. I think he was a 5'3. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know. Did you cross him up one time? No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, like, that guy's. You got to try it. If there's one who's shorter, though, I didn't just kidding. Even try it. I, we were not on a basketball court. We have the professor coming after this. So if you guys want to. Oh, wow. Go one-on-one. What? Do you really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's coming in after. He squints. Does it, he feels like he squints, doesn't <laughs> yeah. he? Um, no, I don't want to go one-on-one against the professor. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It would go viral on TikTok. Oh, what's his name? The back pass, Jason Williams. Jason that, Williams. He there squints right there. Okay. Um, also love Jason Williams. Yeah. Awesome guy. Um, I think Because we got Kobe is, and Jay Will. Him. I think Shaq's him. It feels right. You know, super fun. Yeah, um, and then we just need Smalls now, Smalls, because you got to go someone that's like maybe a little goofy but still really good. You know, not that Freddie Friedman. A little goofy, goofy but still not goofy, but like yeah, just I, kind I know of what like, you mean. Like just like you know, not the loud mouth, kind of shy, kind of you know, but then just hits dingers. I think of like I think of like the Joker. Because he's got, but yeah, I think a, uh, that's kind of a good one. It's because he's so in, unconventional or like Tim Duncan. I, I, these are guys who are like so big and tall. I know. But you team, know how Tim Duncan's perfect for him. Okay. That small's right there. That's exactly right. There. We're not going by height. Listen, I just picked Shaq for me. So I don't think that matters. <laughs> Wait. Tim Duncan is fully smalls. Oh my God. That's a great one. Okay. Perfect. I like going with the 90s, 2000s too. Okay. Sick. That's, that's my, I don't really, I'm not into basketball as much as I was. So we have Shaq, Shaq as Kobe, yourself, Tim Duncan, and Jay Will, and, and Jay Will. That's fun. That's, <laughs> a, like fun That's a fun squad. <laughs> cool. I don't know who beats that squad. That's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's time for the second half. Okay. You talked about, you know, maybe your career not being all glamorous all the time. Was there ever a point where you were like, you know, what this Hollywood stuff? I've had enough. Yeah, for I sure. mean, you started so young. Burnout is real. Yeah, um, I stopped for about a decade, actively trying to do it. Um, I, w- I got married at twenty six, and I think that's about you know when I kind of stopped. Uh, no, I mean maybe for a few years, I I still, um, kind of worked on my career, but from about twenty eight to thirty eight. Uh, I had two kids in there and just focus on that. COVID was in there, which, you know, kind of yeah. derailed everything. Halted um, all of our lives. <laughs> yeah. And then and then when my about, you know, probably around the 30th anniversary, maybe a couple of years before, I 
started having fun with social media and it just kind of um, did its thing and I, I, it became a successful avenue for me, which opened back up the, the acting world and I've been doing it again. Um, I think, you know, I knew that I would do it again. I just wanted to have a family and um, get out of the party scene and, you know, yeah, because I could see where it was going, you know, so. It's it's hard, not only for men, also I feel very hard for women when you start thinking about that. And I'm getting to the time now, like I'm into my 30s now and I am thinking about that, like having kids and having yeah. a family and how do you continue to do both? Because obviously, you know, raising kids, taking care of them, is that's a lot of your time if you want to, yeah. you know, do it properly um, and be there for them. Yeah. But, and with the travel, I'm imagining if you're, I've never shot a film, but when you're on a film set, that's months on end. It's hard. I mean, I, I, I don't have any advice on how to do that because my wife is extraordinarily supportive of me doing that. And if she were not, I wouldn't be able to do it because I travel a lot. My kids are, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. My kids love me, but they are infatuated with their mother. So, <laughs> um, you picked a good one. I picked a good one. Yeah. And it, I don't know how a couple both does it. I've seen the husband be the one that, you know, uh, really takes care, care of the kids or, uh, and, and the, the wife is working. I don't know two a two, like w both of them working in that field with that much travel is difficult, you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know, but people do it too. I mean, you know, people do it. It's amazing. It's impressive. Well, the world also loves your family content <laughs> yeah so that's easy i can yeah. sometimes do it at home it's true it's um it's funny because you're obviously checking out your social media pages and your tiktok and even before we set up this interview i had seen one of your videos like come through my for you page and so was tiktok social media like a new kind of spark for you in this creative space yeah totally i um i kind of the thing that you know even more, I think, than um, even more than like struggles with the dark side of Hollywood. I think the thing that for me that I liked the least was about Hollywood is my fate being in other people's hands. I don't like that. Um, Fair. <laughs> and it's not to say like the Academy is creating um, best casted film and because casting directors, good ones, work their ass off, you know, uh, and they deserve that. But when you're an actor and, you know, you are dedicating your time to this and, again, your fate is in the hands of someone else and you have no control over it, that's tough. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't like that. I got I was getting a little sick of that. And that's what I love about social media is it's in my hands and I can do whatever I want. And it's opened up the door to now doing other things. I did a movie last year, one the year before. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've done different things like that. I'm producing now. Um, so that that's what I like ab about social media uh, and, and just that world. I like to entertain that way. And I would say, yeah, it has it has opened things up. Jax, you know, have you heard of Jax, the recording artist? Um, she's younger. She's amazing. Um, I don't think so. Victoria's Secret. She did a song. Uh, she's got, she's huge on TikToks. So okay. Her, her so is, I probably have heard one of her audios. Yeah, Jax yeah. writes songs and she does all these funny things and she'll sing and play the piano. She's cool. got an amazing voice, but she's, you know, touring now and pretty successful. Had like top 10 songs and stuff. She asked, she had a song that had You're Killing Me Smalls as a line in it. And her her <laughs> her team reached out to me to be in the music video. And I had followed her on social media. So I said, I'll do it. But Jax has to teach me how to do this TikTok thing or I'm or I won't do it. And she loved it and was like, Oh my God, I'm in. So she's been like my mentor. Uh that's actually an and, incredible story <laughs> yeah and she got me started on social media i have another gen z friend of mine that also helps me on all the things and you know make sure i'm not millennial cringe or any of that stuff uh and so I, between the two of them 
I, you know, I can't do this on my own. Let me, let's be honest. So you really, you got the recipe to the secret I got the sauce. Recipe. And I'm not millennial either. I'm Gen X. Let's be honest. So I'm, I'm two generations moved from social media. You can't do the millennial pause. No, oh, I, you know, listen, Gen Xers don't do the millennial pause. I, that I came naturally. The, <laughs> the, hey, what's up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awful, awful. The zooming in. I was like watching this video. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to be myself. You guys don't like it. Yeah. Move on with your day. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So that was fun. She helped me kind of cool, get into the whole thing. And now it's taken on a life of its own. And you uh, are thinking about a podcast also, I heard. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Um, I know how much work it is because during COVID, I kind of had a little fun and just with some friends did it. I only did like half a year, um, but it took so much time. And, you know, it was a lot of work. So I would only want to do it in this sort of scenario where you have a team of support and, um, you know, really nice leather chairs and, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> I um, wish I could claim this as my home. I know, right? That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So I would do it. I just, I would want to, you know, I, I do, I have a production company and um, we have a, a team over there and we, we do a lot of different shoots every month for different commercials and things like that. So I'm pretty busy behind the camera as well. Um, but yeah, it would, I, I would love to do it depending on, uh, you know, who helped me. What would the content be? And that I'd have to, you know, the problem I feel like you're, you're pretty well-rounded there. You have a lot of interest. I know a lot of people tie you back to baseball. Yeah. But it, you have the merch line as well. Yeah. That pays homage to, to yeah. that. But I don't know the because that's the thing is like, you know, we were talking about, I, I don't know, these big successful podcasts very much take a stance, you know, and they um, they take a side. And I don't that's not sort of my philosophy. I'm I don't take I like to be in the middle and see both sides point of views because I, you know, not to get deep and into the problems that this world faces but i do think the problem the real problem is we are so polarized and we're so you know this side or that side mm -hmm. and i don't agree i think that everything all the answers are in the middle and it, you're pulling from both sides so i wouldn't want that's my another hesitation of mine to be so opinionated on one thing uh would scare me you know because i i don't I don't feel that I am that way. I think that there's a lane, though, for not that. Because there is sure. so many people, too, who are, like, tired of being bombarded yeah. from strong opinions from both sides. Yeah. And I think, you know, there are some things, and, and I respect people who are passionate about certain things where they're not budging on it. Even yeah. myself, I feel like the biggest thing for me is just um, treating it. Oh, I was sorry. going there. Yeah, yeah. I was literally going there. <laughs> but I, I'm vegan. I care a lot about animals. Yeah. Um, and just when it comes to those kind of things, uh, you know, adoption, this and that. But everybody has those yeah. things that they're truly passionate about. But then you also see podcasts like the Kelsey Brothers where they just basically. It's true. Yeah. Shoot crap for, you know, two hours yeah. and laugh and joke and it's wholesome and. Yeah, I think I could do a podcast like that. Like I could just have fun. Or just like and... have your have your kids on. Have you seen that guy on TikTok who does it with his daughter? No. Really? Literally the cutest page, I think, on the internet. It's him. They look like a surfer dad and a surfer daughter. That they look like. I don't know if they actually surf. They're very cute. Um, and he just records with his little like seven year old daughter and she just says the darndest things because that's what kids do. Yeah. And they just chat like dad and daughter That's chats cute. yeah which i've seen the skits with your kids so i don't know maybe yeah. you include them in some stuff too okay all right now we're on to something yeah if you need a creative session thank you I'm here for you will you produce <laughs> the podcast sure let's go you just have to add me what's your production company's name uh we're rebranding and changing it so uh i can't say it because we haven't locked it down yet but okay uh, we i don't know we were brookline was what we were being called but okay. um it get it gets too confused with brooklyn Brookline's a city in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, and we're definitely though. not in New York. No, but Brookline is in Massachusetts, which was where I'm from. Okay. But, uh, it, you know, people don't know. Is it one word, two words? So we're changing it. Got it. Well, here on Courtside, we also like to ask some buzzer beater questions. Great. Ready for it? I'm ready. 
What is your ideal food and drink combo while sitting courtside? Oh, I was going to. Okay. While sitting courtside. Mm -hmm. well, courtside, field side, ring side. Okay. If I'm at a baseball game, mm -hmm. a Bud Light and uh, peanuts is unbelievable. Like just American that. Staple. It doesn't have to be Bud Light, but whatever the, you know. Uh, just some light beer. I can't do IPAs, anything like that. So <laughs> okay. a light beer and peanuts is my jam at a baseball game. Um, I don't know. At, at a basketball game, I actually haven't gone to a lot of NBA games. But I feel like that's more of like a nachos and soda experience. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like popcorn. I don't know. Who is one person dead or alive that you would love to sit courtside with or go to a baseball game with? God, um, Babe Ruth, a baseball game, right? Kobe Bryant sick. basketball. Pretty sick. Yeah. And what is one event in history? It could be a sporting event or anything else that you would have loved to have been courtside for. Oh, uh, for sure. The 2004 uh, games, four, five, six, seven of the ALCS, Boston against New York. That's when the only team ever to come back from 03 was the Red Sox against oh. the Yankees. I would love to have watched the, those four games when they came back and then went on to win the World Series. I would love to have been courtside for game seven, Lakers Celtics, um, 2000, whatever, when Kobe had the rough first half, but then the nuts defense. I know I'm from Boston, so it's sacrilegious for me to be a <laughs> Laker fan, that. but I'm I'm a both fan. I love both Boston and LA sports, which is hard to say out loud and don't let anyone in Boston hear me say this, but okay. I've lived here for 30 years. We'll block this saying. episode yeah, from thank you, thank you. Boston viewers. <laughs> uh, but that would have been a really fun one to watch, just with the big three in Boston, with Kobe and Pow. It was just yeah. that was insane. On that... But, Patrick, let every, everybody know where they can find you, what you have in the works, what um, to look out for. My social medias are all my name, at Patrick Renna. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, uh, I've i been producing a lot. Like I said, I, I have a movie uh, that I did last year called You Gotta Believe that should be coming out soon. It's with uh, Greg Kinnear and Luke Wilson, which was cool because I did uh, – X-Files with Luke Wilson years ago. So I cool. got to see him again years later. And then another one uh, called um, Boys of Summer, which randomly was the original title name of Sandlot. Uh, really? Yeah. And I think they're not actually calling it Boys of Summer anymore because someone owns that. Anyway, I don't know the new title, but that's a movie that's uh, coming out as well with Mason Times and Mel Gibson. Um, so those two movies and yeah. You Do you know, have a Netflix show too? Did I hear that? No, I'm, I've been um, I'm in talks and in development with MLB right now. On OK, something. sick. Uh, yeah. So that that it's sort of not at the stage. It's not like secret, but it's not at the stage where I think we're ready to announce something. Yeah. Like we're, we're getting there. So but cool. that will be very exciting. I yeah, think. that'll be um, unscripted and, you know, uh, sort of. Yeah. Thing with MLB. That'll be a lot of fun. Amazing. Yeah. Well, we will keep up on that. Before I let you go for the very last time. Yes. Would you mind making a TikTok together? Sure. Cool. What do you want to do? Shut up, idiot. Moron. Scab eater. Butt sniffer. Yeah. Puss licker. Fart yeah. smeller. You eat dog crap for breakfast, geek. You make your weeds with your mama's toe jam. Yeah. yeah. You bob for apples in the toilet. And you like it. You play ball like a girl.